Alec Baldwin's lawyers filed a extensive motion plus over 300 pages of exhibits arguing that Baldwin's indictment should be dismissed but not without also throwing a ton of shade at the prosecution, attaching their previously sealed or previously not publicly filed motion for sanctions against the prosecution, throwing the prior special prosecutor under the bus, the current special prosecutor under the bus, arguing that the special prosecutor failed to meet their obligations at the grand jury when they indicted Alec Baldwin for the second time. They failed to present to the grand jury as they were required to do the potentially exculpatory evidence. And that is the argument made by Baldwin's attorneys in that extensive motion. Today we are going through, at a first look, the state's response. It is also like 300 pages. There are multiple transcripts attached to it, which is part of why it is so long. The motion itself is over 20 pages long. Undersigned counsel, received information that Mr. Baldwin commissioned his own documentary. Wait, what? What? Undersigned counsel received information that Baldwin commissioned his own documentary about the death of the woman he killed and was actively pressuring material witnesses in the case against him to submit to interviews for his documentary? Baldwin commissioned a documentary about the shooting on set? and was pressuring witnesses in the case to submit to interviews for the documentary. What the f There is clearly no love lost between the prosecution team and Baldwin's defense team because the amount of shade that was thrown in these motions was substantial. The amount of legal arguing at the end of the motions was just a handful of pages. Most of the motion was taken up throwing shade back at Baldwin's attorneys after they came after the prosecutors and basically reiterated their entire motion for sanctions in their filing to dismiss the indictment. Prosecutors pointed out that when Baldwin's lawyers claimed that the prosecution never told the grand jury that they could ask for witnesses, the prosecution says that that was defense counsel's ignorance of the law and that in fact the judge instructs the grand jury thoroughly what their duties are and hands them out a packet that is attached on what their duties are, what they can and cannot ask for, and that they can always refer back to the judge to guide them on what evidence they can ask for and receive. Additionally, the prosecution made clear that they not only read out Alec Baldwin's full a target response letter to the grand jury, but had bankers boxes full of the documents that Baldwin wanted shown to the jury available for them. And the grand jury was told that all of those documents were available to them as they went back to deliberate. So if they wanted to review them, each of them could have taken a copy and reviewed them and they chose not to, which is legally permissible. It's interesting to me that the defense clearly left that out when they were alleging the prosecution made nothing available that they were supposed to. We also learned that the prosecution chose to rescind the plea offer upon learning that Baldwin, as they allege in their filings, was seeking to make a documentary about the shooting on the set of Rust and was pressuring key witnesses to the criminal case to be interviewed for that documentary. Throughout the rest of the filings that we reviewed today, we also saw that Baldwin and his wife maybe were pitching a reality show about their family and that Baldwin's wife would like to be another cast member on The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. It was a very interesting day of pleadings, a lot of shade. And when we get to the hearings in this case, it is going to be fiery. No ruling is made yet on that motion for sanctions. No ruling has been made yet on this motion to dismiss the indictment. The defense has not filed their reply yet. Hopefully it's not 300 pages, but when the reply is filed, we'll cover it. And I look forward to seeing how this hearing goes down. For deep dives into the stories that I covered here, you can find them on my YouTube channel at The Emily D. Baker and The Emily Show Podcast. I stream every Tuesday and Thursday. The podcast goes live on Wednesdays. And if you want to stay in the loop with everything I'm doing, receive the fastest notifications out there 
and get more Law Nerd community, join me at lawnerdapp.com, our free app for iOS and Android.